Hey everyone, today I'm going to be covering how to embed math in your art. This is a really useful shader trick to get per pixel data into your shader. I'm Game Dev Bill. Let's get started. Normally, when you sample a texture, you're getting R, G, B, and A values in. Now there's a lot of data that you can hide in that value. So we're going to be going over three examples today of how to do that. The first one will be a normal map, which is a type of surface map. The second will be noise. And the third will be positional data. As with many of my videos, there's a written version on my website. So if you need more information, want to copy paste some things or just dive a little deeper, be sure to look for the link to gamedevbuild.com in the description below. As I said, the first example is going to be a normal map. To remind you what exactly that is, I've got a 2D example here. So we've got a surface that's got a bunch of bumps on it. And a normal is the vector perpendicular to the surface. So this surface would have many, many of these. In our case, here's this gray arrow representing the normal in that spot. Encoding it into its X and Y, you can see how those values could then be set into the R and G channels of an image. If this was a 3D normal map, then you'd have the R, G, and B values encoding the X, Y, and Z. To get started, I'm going to use a curved sphere-like normal map on this flat texture in my scene. So I'll create a shader graph, set up the default texture input, and then copy that texture input to sample our normal map. With that copied, I'm going to just set its input directly rather than having an input to the shader to be my normal map. Now, initially, it looks weird. It's not the right color. You have to tell the sampler that you're sampling a normal map. Feed that into the normals channel. And with that basic setup, we've got kind of a sphere-like look to our sprite. Now, it doesn't really look very good. I'm going to go ahead and clean it up a little bit and make it look better. So first off, I'm going to tweak some of the settings on the master node of the shader graph. So let's clean up this sample so that it looks a little better going forward. The main thing that looks wrong about it is the art doesn't look spherical. The art's not being bent the way the lighting is. I'm going to create a polar coordinate node. This takes our UVs, which are in Cartesian coordinates, and converts them to polar, where the R channel is the radius and the G channel is the angle. I'm going to feed that into a split and then into a combine because I don't want to change the G or the angle, but I do want to change the radius. So I feed that into an arc sine node and then directly back into my combine. This will give it more of a curvature that I'm after. Now, at this point, my coordinates are in polar coordinates and I need to convert them back to Cartesian. I have a Cartesian coordinate node here. Now, Shader Graph doesn't actually have a Cartesian coordinates node that's up on the asset store. That's one I made because I needed it and I put it up there. There's also a written tutorial on what's going on inside that node on my website, gamedevbuild.com. Now, in addition to shaping the way the texture is sampled, I want to also cut out the outside of my circle. So I'm going to take the radius from my polar coordinates of the, the UV coordinates, feed that into a one minus node, and feed that into the alpha input of my master node. I also need to go in and set the alpha clipping threshold to something like 0.001, just something really small which will help it cut out the outside. Now, if we go look at this in the game view, you can see that it cut out the outside and it sampled the texture with a little bit of curvature to it. And now it looks much more like a ball. Now, so far, the texture we've been using as a normal map is actually one we could have calculated. It's just this distance from the center thing. We could have done the math to generate those normals on the fly. But some are much more complicated and need to be driven from art. So I'm going to give an example of that and also show you a little trick. So I can take my actual texture here, copy it, and then tell Unity that it's a normal map. Now, it isn't a normal map yet, but there's a checkbox there to drive it from grayscale. I check that, and I hit Apply, and now it turns it into a normal map for me. Going back to my shader, I can copy the sampler from my initial one and change which texture it's being driven by to this one that I just made, so it's got another normal map on it. And now I take both of these and I can feed them together using a normal blend. That's the node that combines two normal maps. Now, if I'm doing anything to normal map data, I always normalize it just before I feed it in. In this case, I don't think I actually needed to, but better safe than sorry. Now, if you remember, our actual texture isn't being sampled using standard UV coordinates, but the normal map of it is. So we have to change which UVs are driving this node as well. So I can take the output from my Cartesian coordinate node above, 
drag it into this sampler, and it'll curve the normal map to match the way the texture is being curved. When I go back to the game view, you can see that it actually looks correct. Next up, I'm going to show you an example of encoding noise into a texture. Here I've got this cloudy texture that I'm going to sample. Now, ShaderGraph does have several noise nodes, but Sometimes it's easier to sample, sometimes it's cheaper, just depends on what you're doing and what you need. So I'll copy my texture sampler. I'm gonna just set the input to be my cloud noise. And then here I'm gonna feed the output of this into a multiply to kind of scale it down a little bit and then subtract it from the previous uh, value that I was feeding into alpha and feed this new one instead. And you can see that it's starting to make the edges disappear a little bit. Now I'm gonna animate it, make it a little more interesting this isn't actually that relevant to the demo, so I'll go a little quick here. Taking the UVs, this is very similar to what I did in the heat haze tutorial, but take the UVs, take this subtract, and I'm gonna feed in time here, scaled a little bit. And then in addition to the uh, adjusting of the UVs, I'm gonna take time and mess with the uh, Y value to where I'm gonna make this uh, slowly disappear more and more over time. So I take my Y value, feed it into some nodes with another copy of time, feed that into a subtract, and then a clamp. The clamp is just there to keep it positive, so I need to set the upper limit to something like 10. Jumping over to play mode, you can see that this does slowly disappear over time. Uh, I'm also going to show you one more trick to do when you're doing a noise edge effect like this, a sort of dissolve effect like this. It's to take the alpha value you have, multiply it by something big, and then clamp it. And what that does is it makes it to where where things are invisible at zero, and then it ramps quickly from zero to one uh, at the edge of your object. I multiply that by my color and I get a little darkened edge here. Now the last sample I wanna show you is what I would call positional data. That's where you encode in your art information about what's going on on the screen. To do that, I'm gonna combine two previous lessons. I'm gonna take what I had in the heat haze sample and in the introduction to shader graph. To combine these, I need a piece of art that tells me which parts of the screen are flames. So I've made a piece of art that has white circles where the flames are and is black everywhere else. I can use this as my overlay. So to get started, I'm going to take my heat haze effect from, again, that previous tutorial and convert it to a subgraph. A subgraph is like a function, just like you'd write in any code. So I select all the nodes that I want, right click and say convert to subgraph. Now it leaves the little groups behind, you gotta clean those up. This gives us a node that will do the heat haze for us. It's got some issues with the inputs, I need to clean that up, but otherwise it's ready to go to do our heat haze effect. With that subgraph created, I can go over to my shader graph from the original tutorial, and I replace the sampler with my heat haze node. Now, most of those inputs I set up in a previous tutorial, so I'm just gonna skip to all of those being hooked up, but I will show you the activator one. This activator input was what I had been driving with math in the previous tutorial. If I set it to 1, the whole screen is getting affected. Here, I'm going to now set it up to where it's being driven by art. So I create a sampler node. I'm going to set the input to that sampler to be my overlay texture. And then I can go into play mode and see it in action. Thank you so much for watching. Be sure to check out my shader series. Also, there's a lot of tutorials available on my website, gamedevbuild.com. Please subscribe, and thank you, thank you so much.